Welcome into another Fallout 76 video and in today's video we're going to be checking out some of the rarest outfits in the game and where to find them. So without any further ado, let's get into it. The first outfit we'll be covering today is the Travelling Leather Coat. Now, if you're new to the game, you're probably wondering why is this so rare? I mean, compared to other outfits in the game, there's a lot more variety and some of the outfits that have been added over the last several years look really good in comparison to this. You can find this outfit on some raiders throughout the wasteland and even on the bodies of corpses. Well, the reason why this is so sought after is that this outfit has a 0.02% drop rate compared to its counterpart, the leather coat, which basically comes without the backpack on the back of the outfit, which has a much lower drop rate of 0.01%. That's right, these outfits are so rare and difficult to obtain that people who've been playing this game since launch still haven't managed to obtain these outfits. And if you do manage to obtain one of them, then honestly, make sure you go out and do the lottery on the same day because the gods of luck are on your side. I've been playing this game since launch, so 2018, and I only managed to obtain this in August or September of last year. So yeah, you thought the grind for getting an entire set of the legendary armor and weapons you were looking for was a grind? Well, this is next level, and even people will trade extremely valuable items for this. So let's talk about how to find it. In order to have a chance of getting either outfits, you need to complete the following daily quests or events in the mire. You need to complete Idle Explosives, Playtime, Queen of the Hunt, Waste Not, Always Vigilant, Heart of the Swamp, Irrational Fear, and it's a trap. Now events like always vigilant and it's a trap don't always spawn in the mire and can be completed in other areas around the map. However, you need to complete these events while in the mire in order for these outfits to trigger a drop chance. And you're probably wondering, well, how do I increase my chances of getting either of these outfits? Well, my best advice is to make sure each time you log into Fallout 76, make sure you complete each of the daily quests previously mentioned, as you could be waiting quite a while for any of the events mentioned to trigger. And if you're lucky enough, the outfits will eventually drop. I even had someone on Twitter reach out to me and mention that after they built a camp in the mire and after a week of farming the daily quests and events, they got the traveling leather coat. Now you don't need to build a camp to increase your chances, but all you need to do is to make sure to visit the mire at least once a day in order for these daily quests to trigger, which reset for your character once every 24 hours, hence the name Daily Quests. The next outfits we'll be covering is the Clean Spacesuit. The Hunter's Long Coat. The Longshoreman's Outfit The Winter Jacket and Jeans The Skiing Red and Green Outfit and the white and purple outfit. The fisherman's overalls. And the clean ranger outfit and the clean ranger hat. With these outfits, which are also extremely sought after, the good news is that you will have a higher chance in obtaining these. However, the process will take a bit of time and potentially a few server hops because these outfits can be obtained from the traveling merchant, the vendor bot responder, who wanders with an entourage consisting of two IBOC guards and a pack Brahmin, which is a traveling random encounter. 
And what is a traveling random encounter? So a random encounter is when you enter any location across the world that has a random encounter spawn located at it. And there's multiple areas around the world that have these and each random encounter takes between 10 to 30 minutes to respawn. So that's why server hopping is the quickest way to find this vendor bot responder. Now don't worry, I've narrowed down all six of the potential spawn points for this vendor to spawn at, so let's go over some of the locations. The first potential location you can find the vendor bot is by heading west of the Riverside Manor. If you follow this road and then roughly halfway down on the left beside this tree, This will be one of the potential spawn points and bear in mind any random encounter can trigger when going to any of these locations. The next potential location will be to head to the New River Gorge Bridge. When you arrive here make your way down the side of the mountainside and make your way down this road. When you get about halfway down this road you'll have a chance for the vendor bot to spawn. The next potential location is to head to the Charleston train yard and head north towards the Charleston station. If you make your way across this bridge and if you stop here at this collapsed electricity pole and sign, you'll have a chance for the vendor bot to spawn. The next location is to head to the white powder winter sports. When you arrive here you'll automatically spawn at the random encounter so my best advice to trigger it is to head right down this road and then when you get to the bottom of the road loop back around and when you eventually come back up you'll trigger the random encounter which will give you a chance for the vendor bot to spawn. The next location is to head to Mama Dolce's food processing. When you arrive here you'll need to turn around and make your way up this road. When you get to about here, turn back around and run back up the road. And when you arrive at this bridge, you'll have a chance for the vendor bot to spawn. The final location will be to head to Lady Janet's Soft Serve. When you arrive here, make your way west of Lady Janet's and when you head down this road and on the left, about halfway down, you'll trigger the random encounter which will give you a chance for the vendor bot to spawn. Now for me, I found the vendor bot at the Charleston train station, but again, this could be completely different for you. And in its inventory, the vendor will usually only sell two potential outfits at a time, with each rare apparel item having a 7.4% chance to be available. So my best advice is that if you eventually find the vendor, make sure to let a friend know so that they can fast travel to you and check its inventory, as the inventory for somebody else will be completely different. And if your friend is generous enough, they can purchase the outfits you're looking for, which will double your chances at finding the outfits mentioned. The vendor bot will also have the clean straight jacket, the grey fisherman's overalls and also sell the plans for the cuckoo clock and the Nuka Cola clock. And there you have it, some of the rarest outfits in Fallout 76 and where to find them. Hopefully it won't take you too long to obtain the outfits shown in today's video. And if you found today's video helped you out, consider clicking that subscribe button for more Fallout content like this and so you never miss out on any videos that I publish. I want to say a massive thank you to all of our channel members and subscribers over here on YouTube as it means the world to me that you enjoy my content and the work that I produce. For our Bethesda fans, if you find yourself shopping on the Bethesda store and would like to support the channel, you can use my creator code BTPINEAPPLE011 to receive 20% off of your purchases at checkout. And if you'd like to support the channel in a more personal way, consider checking out my merch store which has an array of t-shirts, mugs and other pineapple related merch which I'll leave a link to in the description of this video. And lastly, to you, the viewer, the person who stumbled upon this video, thank you for being here, I hope you enjoyed. Until next time Vault Dwellers, stay safe out there in the wasteland, welcome to Vault 93 and I'll catch you all in the next video.